around in the back. We've had more fun in Panchito than you can shake a stick at. I've been on this airplane once before. We had two surviving Doolittle Raiders on board as well. Dick Cole was flying us around. He was Jimmy Doolittle's co-pilot on that brave mission. All 80 men, volunteers. Just put it into perspective. I mean, you're here in New York. You remember September 11th. You remember 9-11. So put yourself in their shoes some 70 plus years ago at Pearl Harbor, right after we'd been hit. Just a few months after that, these guys devised a plan to strike the heart of Japan from the pitching deck of an aircraft carrier. They put 16 of those B-25s on the deck, those airplanes down low, right over the top of the water, about 50 feet to be exact. And right when they got over the runways, and the target points, in this case, the target points, back then, the target points, today, the runway, you will see Larry Kelly pitch the airplane up just a little bit. The bomb bay doors will come open. To, well, to show you just what it would have looked like back then, over the heart of Tokyo, just imagine this, the Doolittle pop-up raid. All of the targets that they hit there, well, were they strategically important? Probably not. But the Japanese people had no idea that the Americans could reach it. There it is. With Panchito. Those 16 airplanes went on to fly for hours, staring the darkness and the unknown right. Right in the eyes, Dick Cole said the hardest part of that entire mission was when he opened that escape hatch and he looked down, and all he saw was darkness. He bailed out. They got where they could. Some of them had to ditch the airplanes. Made a movie about it called 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. A lot of you who are out here today, maybe in your 20s, maybe in your 30s, maybe even in your 40s, it's ancient history to you. You've never heard the story of the Doolittle Tokyo Raiders. Well, let me tell you, they are some of the finest Americans you've ever met. Our relationship today, you hear a lot about China. But when Dick Cole passed away last year, and all of the Raiders, they will tell you this, the Chinese people took such great care of them when they walked out of China. That's where most of them landed. They were the reason, the Chinese people, they were the reason the Doolittle Raiders made it to safety. The Japanese knew that. They slaughtered over 250,000 of the Chinese people in retaliation for helping those Doolittle Raiders get out of the country. So to their dying day, the Doolittle Tokyo Raiders, all 80 of them, had a special place in their heart for the Chinese people. Today, Larry Kelly and his friends there at the Delaware Aviation Museum Foundation fly this aircraft in honor of not only the Doolittle Raiders, but all of our World War II veterans, living and deceased, and those whose shoulders they stand upon. We're so happy to be here today. Here's another bomb pass. You too can go fly on this airplane as soon as it lands. Run over there to the tent and sign up for your flight on Panchito. They fly in honor of all those who have gone before. This airplane, unlike any other B-25, is historic in its own right. Once a crop duster down there in Florida, lovingly restored by Tom Riley years ago. This airplane has led all of the commemorative flights for the Doolittle Tokyo Raiders. It led one of the largest B-25 formations post-World War II just a few years ago in honor of the Tokyo Raiders. Larry Kelly, though, a man who puts his money where his mouth is, flew this airplane in support of the disabled American veterans for a number of years. Today, continues to fly at air shows just like this one around the country, telling the story of our World War II generation. Those big right engines thundering past. What does it sound like to be in a B-25? You get asked that a lot. Crew on this airplane. The closest thing I can tell you, just imagine putting a metal bucket over your head and having your two best friends stand on either side and bang on it with a hammer. When you take the headphones off of this thing, it is 
exceptionally loud. But you have to put yourself back in that time and imagine being shot at. Maybe you're standing there in the waist gun. You can imagine the flak coming up around you. If you're up there in the glass nose and you look down that Raiders bomb site, just imagine what it must have been like coming over the coast of Japan, low and at 50 feet. They didn't have the Norton bomb site on that mission. They had this little piece of aluminum. Looks like a rain gauge almost from your backyard. And, and that is what they sighted the bombs in with. You can see it on Panchito when you take that flight later on today. Go by there, sign up, take the flight in Panchito. The price will long be forgotten, but the memory will remain. It is a small price to pay, folks. To help keep this history alive, the Delaware Aviation Museum Foundation, an all-volunteer group right there in Georgetown, Delaware, keeps this airplane going. And they would certainly love to talk to you right now. In fact, they're over there by the F-16s in that tent. Go by there, sign up for your flight today. Maybe, though, maybe you want to do something a little more. Maybe you're a pilot. How many pilots do we have out here? Let's see a show of hands. How many folks out here have their pilot's license? Well, I apologize to the people that are standing next to you because I'm sure you've already told them that you're a pilot, but we're glad you're here. So, listen, if you want to go fly Panchito, you can get a, what they call a second-in-command ticket in this airplane. Larry and the crew there will actually teach you how to fly the right seat position in this airplane for a small fee. You can go down there and learn how to fly Panchito. Maybe you don't want to do that, but maybe you want to do something a little more. You're just a, a passenger, perhaps. Well, you can go down and learn all of the systems. They'll spend the entire day with you. They'll talk to you about the bombardier position, the waist gunner position, the top turret position, the pilot, the co-pilot position. You'll learn it all, and you'll go for a great flight down the Delaware coastline toward the evening hours, but it's really pleasant. Come back and have some some dinner. It'll be fun. Right down there at the Panchito Hangar, the Delaware Aviation Museum Foundation. Great fun. Go down there and see it, won't you? Larry's going to lower the landing gear now, and we'll see. We'll see this big B-25 come back in and return to Earth. One of the things about the B-25 to point out is that the steering on the nose wheel, there is, there is none. So you'll see it when he lands, he's going to keep the wheels, the back wheels down first, the mains. He's going to hold that nose wheel off as long as he can to keep it from shimmying. Just like that shopping cart that you use every day. The nose wheel will do the same thing if you let it touch down too soon. So Larry keeps it high, a little aerodynamic braking as well. When he lands, it'll just stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. He'll hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, and let that big wing stay up in the air, too, and help slow him down. Hard to believe, though, this airplane, with all of those crew members on board, Curtis Wright engines, 14 cylinders apiece, somewhere around 2,600 cubic inches, each of those engines developing around 1,700 horsepower at 2,600 RPMs. Nearly 11,000 B-25s were built. Approximately about 30 of them survived today. 25 or so fly regularly. But here's the thing. That B-25 that you see right there, with all of the lives that it had to carry to deliver the weapons, it could only carry about 3,000 pounds of bombs. That's it, 3,000 pounds of bombs. By the end of the war, the single-engine Sky Raider could carry more than that. A lot of lives to deliver those 3,000 pounds of bombs. Here's Larry in the flare. He's going to hold it up, watch it. It gets about 150 landings per tire. They don't make him anymore, either. There he is, though. Larry Kelly touching down with Panchito. Great job there. Go by and see him, folks. Take a ride in the airplane this afternoon. It's the Delaware Aviation Museum Foundation. Now, 